Hi everyone, welcome back to the weekly politics show. I'm Councillor uh, Premier with co-host Councillor Andrew Wood on Relax Radio. So we're going to talk about the Weavers by-election um, and the possible reasons uh, for what is <laughs> a bad night for the local Labour Party. Uh, there's no, uh, there's a consensus on that. But, it's, but it seems like there's different reasons as to why um, this has happened. Um, I was mildly surprised in the afternoon to see a whole series of tweets on social media that is related to the trial and acquittal of Absana uh, Begum. Um, but then, but then, <clears throat> I've seen other reasons, and I've written a interesting, reflective piece um, on on Weaver's by election. But and Andrew, over over to you. You you did the stats uh, before the election. Uh, 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 the results were declared. Uh, just just breaking down that what in a sense was one of the safest labor wards in Tower Hamlets has fallen. Yeah, no, because I, I just did a, a tweet at exactly at ten p.m. last night because I'd, I'd heard labor in trouble, and in theory that that shouldn't have been mm. the case because it is, as you said, one of the safest labor uh, wards. Uh, because it was originally Liberal Democrat ward up until around sort of two thousand six, and then after that it became a very safe Labour seat, increasingly safe. You know, so to give an example, in May 2018, Labour got 52% of the vote in, 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 in May 2018. They won by-elections in 2008 and 2012. They won it in 2010, 2014 and 2018. Um, but what, the other thing I sort of did is I sort of did a, some analysis comparing May 2018 with, with the results yesterday. Uh, and the Aspire share of the vote went from 17% up to 46%, so that's a 30% increase. Um, Labour went from 52 down to 29%. Um, Conservatives went from seven, uh, from 7 to 14%. Green went from 10% down to 8%. Liberal Democrats went from 6% down to 2%. So basically both Aspire and Conservatives increased their share of the vote and everybody else declined. So, you know, a lot of People are also sort of saying it's related to livable streets. And it is interesting that those two parties that increased their votes were both campaigning quite strongly on livable streets and wanting to make changes to how they work. So I don't think you can make a direct correlation because obviously there are always other issues, if some are Begum trial perhaps, but but it certainly there is a strong suggestion that livable streets was was one of the reasons why why Labour lost uh, what should have been in theory a very safe ward yesterday. I, I think, um, from my experience, livable streets was one of the key issues. Um, as a Labour canvasser, I remember um, before each session, we were briefed on uh, livable streets. Um, we did ask for a line to give to residents. Um, the, the local Labour Party was collecting data of people who were uh, who showed hostility towards livable streets so they could write a letter to them. Um, and there were talks of the actual policy being rolled back, um, uh, and it was kind of interesting. Um, and you know, there are rumours that the policy might be rolled back. Um, uh, I, I heard there was an announcement on Monday, but then that meeting got cancelled, where that announcement was going to be. So it shows how much flu it is. But I, I know many people saw it as a referendum. On Liverpool streets, with sixty-three percent of residents uh, voting against uh, low traffic uh, yeah. neighbourhoods, where, where do we, t in terms of uh, Liverpool streets and low traffic neighbourhoods, uh, how how do we take it forward? The debate, etc. I know yourself, Andrew, and I have campaigned vociferously against the flawed consultation, the flawed rollout. Do you see it as a, a victory for the campaign? Yeah. So so. My issue is, has always been, so it, everybody likes livable streets. Everybody wants better streets, you know. There are very few people who really want lots of vehicles wrapped running. And this started off in whopping with, with whopping residents campaigning for years to stop people wrapped running through their neighbourhoods. So, you know, how did we start with something that had really broad community support to, to where arguably, and, and we can argue exactly how much I, I think it contributed to Labour's loss yesterday, and I think what we have to do is go back and find out, you know, what do residents want and sort of almost kind of restart the process. And in terms of Liverpool streets itself, I mean, they're not, I don't think they're even halfway through the process. There's still large sections of Tower Hamlets still to do. I know there's work on Shadwell 
that's sort of ongoing. The Barkentine and my ward, uh, they're just finishing off some of the work, but they've skipped other bits uh, and they were meant to do other parts of the island. So in terms of the total programme, they're, they're not at the halfway point yet. Uh, so I think this is an opportunity to kind of restart the conversation. And, and personally, my, my view is, is that, you know, emergency vehicle access is a critical issue. Um, we need to work much more closely with them about how they have access. I'm, I really prefer bus camera gates because you can allow people, you know, the right people through disabled, elderly taxis, for example, through and, and, you know, then the rat run is from outside of Tower Hamlets or from the wrong part of Tower Hamlets, you can then find at the appropriate points. That for me would be a much better solution. And I'm sure other people will have different views. So what I'm hoping is that the mayor and Labour Party will see this as a reset opportunity um, and not just stop the whole thing because there are, there are some good things to livable streets. Um, but, you know, one of my main issues is, is, again, you know, the other issue that was the top of people's concerns, certainly in terms of the Aspire leaflets and I know for Conservatives as well, was antisocial behaviour. You know, we're approximately we're spending 10 times as much on livable streets as we are on antisocial behaviour in terms of, you know, capex spend. Is that the right distribution of monies? And, and I, I think not. Um, and, and I would personally argue that the Weavers Ward is is perhaps evidence of, of that. So is that another opportunity to, to you know, have a debate about some of these issues, especially with the, the budget coming uh, not many months away? Well, um, I think it was you, Andrew, who framed it first as the referendum on unlivable streets. And that was actually picked up by Mayor John Vince, who uh, in, a, in a gathering that I was insisted that it wasn't a referendum on livable streets, but um, but clearly from Kabir Ahmed's victory speech, he did make livable streets the prominent issue in that yeah. video piece where yeah. uh, we saw the back of the head of the mayor walking off. Uh, and and uh, but so I, is is you as you as the opposition group are you going to take it forward at the next? Uh, I know you've got so many. Uh, stuff in your intray what do you go with what, what are you thinking of going ahead with in september's full council um so yeah so we i was talking to councillor peter golds about that earlier because we've only got three council meetings left uh before next may's elections plus budget of course and there's an awful lot of stuff that and we missed council meetings last year so there's an awful lot of things that we still want to to raise so I, I sort of don't know, but, but one of the interesting things as a result of yesterday is that there are now two opposition groups in Tower Hamlets Council because you need two councillors to form a group. Um, and now Aspire have got two and, and the Conservative group with me as an independent um, are, are, are two groups. So that'll be interesting to see what happens for them in the next nine months. I mean, one of the, you know, as a reminder, and I have to remind myself about this, you know, back in 2016, um, whatever you wanted to call them, I think they technically they were independent at that point, but in Whitechapel Ward, there was a by-election by in 2016 that Aspire stroke Tower Hamlet's first won, and they then lost that ward uh, in 2018. So, you know, Labour may take the view that, well, they'll just win this back next May, which is certainly possible, but I think they're going to have to do a lot of work. Um, and I think my gut says the odds are against them that actually um, that, that result yesterday could be repeated next May in, in a number of wards because, you know, the administration just aren't doing a good enough job. And, and, and I think the mayor knows that himself. He made some you know, very interesting comments about the swimming pool closures. So out of the five council swimming pools, three of them are currently closed. One of them, St. George's, may never reopen. And the other two, Tiller and York Hall, uh, have been closed for months more than they need to be. Is there are repair problems and they need to be fixed and why was that allowed to, to happen that we've, we've only now got two out of five operational and, and i know the mayor was very disappointed about that but ultimately it's his responsibility um and you know and i could go on but we don't have the time to do to talk about that so um, I've, i think um that's that's a, that's an ongoing issue i know um i've been hearing rumors about the closure of saint george's for nearly over a decade now it's been earmarked for uh, housing um yeah. and th there are residents who think this is part of a wider conspiracy to just let it run down because the actual value of the land is more than the actual value of the swimming pool and mm -hmm. they they suspect council officers um have other intentions uh and that that's always been the case but we're coming um 
near to the end of our show. Um, Andrew, um, going back to the Absana Begum trial and acquittal, um, when do you do you expect an answer to those questions, or when do you expect an answer? Is it going to be an audit, or is it going to be um, when, when would you and when would you publish those answers to the questions you've raised? Um, well, I know a number of key people are away on holiday this month, including technically myself. Um, so I think we're not going to get any sort of quick answers, and it'll be up to the audit committee to have a think about this as well. And I know the chair has seen my email, and she's responded that she will have a think about it and come back after her holidays. Um, and you know, and some of this stuff we don't need to solve in the next couple of weeks. Some of this stuff is, you know, we have to have a think about. An issue that, you know, audit committee already thinking about because we've got issues with our housing waiting list. We knew that already. So there was a piece of audit, internal audit work and there's going to be some work done in the housing regeneration committee. So some of this stuff is already in, in process anyway. But in terms of my emails with the council, uh, that will it will happen over the coming weeks. And, and some of that I will put in, the, well, not their emails, some of my original email I will put in the public domain because I think you know it is in the public interest. I will strip out personal and sensitive information and I won't reveal everything but I'll I'll make clear you know the reasons why I'm not publishing everything so yes and, and so you'll probably see something in a couple of weeks time yeah and on, on a final note there is a petition that's out there I know uh, we've all been tagged on social media is that something that you as the opposition group uh, would support a public investigation inquiry into is that the best approach in your opinion or, or... um I think, well, the council have to do something. They can't just sort of pretend it didn't happen. And it comes back to the original point with, with Peter. I, I, I increasingly feel that we shouldn't have this power. Um, and if we are to do it, then we need to be much better at it. Or, or maybe we are really, because, you know, we have won these prosecutions before. Maybe we were just unlucky in this case. Um, maybe this is just too close to us. Maybe we should have passed this off to the CPS. But yeah, I don't think we can simply say we, we're not going to see anything about it. I don't think that's sustainable either. Uh, and of course, the other person we, we haven't really heard from yet is, is Councillor Etisham Hack. You know, he's had very serious allegations made against him. And, you know, we'll see him. Mean, he's put out a statement and we will see what he has to say in the coming weeks and months. Understood. So it's an issue that's going to roll and roll. Um, we're, we're at the end of our show. Uh, Thank, thank. I just just going to sign off. I just want to thank all our viewers and listeners for joining us at the weekly politics show. Uh, this show, uh, this week's show, we had Pete Robot, uh, veteran or not so veteran, spring chicken. That's what he'd like to describe himself, journalist. Um, uh, but thank you again for watching uh, uh, the show and listening to it. I'm Councillor Premier with co-host Councillor Andrew Wood. Thank you again. Bye bye.